Hi kids, happy Easter. Um, I wanna ask you a question. What is Easter anyway? Why do we celebrate Easter? A lot of people think that Easter is when Jesus died, but that's not what Easter is. Easter is when Jesus came back alive, fully alive. And that's what Christians celebrate. So um, I'm gonna start the story when Jesus' body um, had been taken down from the cross. And um, a man who was a follower of Jesus, but a secret follower, he was scared. He was scared to tell people that he believed in Jesus. So he followed Jesus, but he did it in secret. He got brave and he went to um, Pontius Pilate and his helpers and asked, could he have Jesus's body and he would take care of it. And so they said that would be fine. The Bible says that he and a friend went, the friend's name was Nicodemus and Nicodemus also was a secret follower. And they went and asked because Joseph, the first man, had already purchased for his family a um, tomb, a piece of the side of a, the rocky side of a hill to that had been carved out so that that would be a place for his family to be buried. And he wanted Jesus to be there instead of his family. And so that's where the story is going to start. So Jesus and his friends gently carried Jesus and they laid him in a new tomb carved out of rock. How could Jesus die? What had gone wrong? What did it mean? They didn't know anything anymore. There it seemed that their whole world was changing and it was confusing and they didn't know what to do, but their hearts were breaking because they were afraid they would never see Jesus. Now the soldiers, who had been sent to guard the tomb, moved a heavy, heavy rock over the entrance. And the Bible says they sealed it. That's the end of Jesus, the leaders boasted. But just to be sure, they put, a, like I said, a special sealing around it. Probably, I'm guessing, made out of like, you know, mud and it dried around so that it would be extra hard to move. Well, just as the friends of Jesus thought that everything was lost, and just as the soldiers thought everything was perfect, God did something on his own. You know, we always think that things that are around us are mm, all that there is, when really God is working all the time. He's solving everything all the time and he was doing it that day too. That night, God sent an earthquake. The earthquake was not a giant one that would knock down buildings. It was one just strong enough to, you guessed it, move that rock. Now that wasn't enough. God sent an angel. And when the soldiers saw the angel, they ran away. So that in the morning when Jesus's friends, Mary Magdalene, uh, Salome, and another Mary, the Bible doesn't tell us which Mary it was. So it could have been Mary, his mother. It could have been Mary and Martha's. Mary, that's Martha's sister. It could have been another follower named Mary. But the Bible does say Mary Magdalene, Salome, and Mary went to the tomb. Now they were going there expecting that the rock would still be sealing it. And they were wondering, how will we get that rock away so that we can take the spices that we're carrying into the tomb um, to put them, put them on Jesus's body. But as they got there, they saw that the stone had been moved 
and they looked up and saw the Bible says that the angel was a man whose clothes were like lightning. That's how bright they, it was, that he was like lightning. And they were afraid. And they said, I, we are afraid. What have you done to Jesus? And the angel said, why are you looking here where dead people would be? Jesus is alive. Well, the three women were confused and scared and probably a little bit excited too. So the Bible says that the angel invited them to look inside. But the Bible doesn't say that they did look inside. The Bible said that they ran to tell Jesus's friends. So they ran and found Jesus's friends and told them what they had seen. When they told them, the Bible says that Peter and John immediately got up and ran to the tomb. And it says that Mary Magdalene, Mary, the one who kind of was the first one, the one who talked to the angel, ran after them. So that when she got there, she saw Peter and John and they were both going into the tomb and then they came out and they were talking to each other and very excited and also fearful and also confused. And Mary said, what did you see? And they said, just as you said, Jesus is not there, but the linen cloths that we had wrapped around him when we buried him were there. And the napkin that we had wrapped over his head, wrapped his head in, was folded up neatly and put right where Jesus' head had been laid in the tomb. So the men, not knowing what was happening and just trying to figure things out, ran back to where they had been. But Mary stayed there in the garden that was nearby. And the Bible says that she started to cry. Now, Mary was crying. She was afraid that maybe the soldiers had taken the body and they were going to do something um, with it. Or she was excited, probably kind of afraid to be that excited that Jesus might be alive like the angel said. She wondered, what, you know, what is happening? Have I imagined this? And just then she saw someone coming toward her. Now her eyes, she'd been crying and so her eyes weren't seeing that well but she could tell it was a man. And she said to the man, sir, do you know where they have taken Jesus? And then the Bible says she asked again when the man didn't answer. And she said, do you know where they've taken my Lord? And then the man said, Mary. And as soon as she heard her name, she knew the voice, it was Jesus. And the Bible says that she cried out in joy and fell down. And then she tried to reach out to Jesus. And Jesus said, Mary, don't touch me yet. I still need to go to my Father in heaven. But go and tell my friends, I will return. Mary got up and ran as fast as she could, knowing that Jesus was not dead. He was fully alive, and she told his friends, and they did just what Jesus said. They waited until he returned to them, which the Bible tells us he did that very night. And that was the night when Jesus walked into the upper room and saw his friends there, and they said, Oh my goodness, Jesus, it's true. You are alive. So I hope you guys have the best Easter ever. And hopefully next Easter, we can all be together. Love you. And most especially remember, just like Jesus remembered and knew Mary's name and how it touched her heart, Jesus knows every one of your names. And he loves you just as much 
as he loved Mary. It always makes me feel good. I hope it makes you feel good too.